All right, so I've got two different systems here. I've got logged in as an administrator in the system and, I've, and I'm logged in as a, um, on this side, it's an administrator. This side, it's a, it's a, tip, it's a very typical user. So if I wanted to, um, so my user here is Michael Honeycutt and I have the administrator for our demo environment on this side. And coming in, first and foremost, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see, uh, you'll wanna go to make.powerapps.com. And this URL gives you kind of that entry point to anything that you'd like to see or like to maintain on your environments. And up at the top right, you're gonna see an environment dropdown. This is a demo environment, so we have uh, our, our basic one that we're gonna select. And this is where all of, the, all of our solutions live. But as we dive into this, what you'll see is you click solutions and you've got the option to start a solution, but on the left, you also see flows. You can come to flows and what this gives you is it gives you more of a personal environment. So you can start your flows, you can build your flows and then um, export them and utilize them you know, uh, from your perspective, but then you can share them out. You can export them and send them to your, uh, to your coworkers. Or if you have a multi-environment setup, a lot of times what we'd recommend is going into solutions and starting a flow from a solution. There's a couple different ways uh, that, obviously that we can do this, but if you're in, in flows, you have the option to start from a template. And a lot of times templates make sense because you can start, uh, it'll give you the, the individual connections like, and it gives you a very descriptive uh, title, like add an item to SharePoint and send an email. So you see the different connections that are required to make that operation happen. Um, so you may find a template, you might not. And, and again, a lot of times, uh, what I find with, with flows is if you, if you are looking at any point to um, connect, first of all, with purely CDS or move environments or deploy those, those flows to different environments, um, you know, I, I would personally myself and, you know, from a best practice perspective, go into the, uh, the source environment that you want to build this flow around and start a solution. Because what happens is, is that when you start a flow and my flow, it won't immediately show up in any solution. You can't deploy that from one area to the other without physically exporting that or uh, that flow and taking that file, moving it to a different environment or different tenant or whatever the case is and, and, um, and deploying it that way. Versus a solution, you can take multiple things like your, uh, your, your lead, you can take your, the fields that you had to create around that if you had to create custom fields. So it's, you know, solutions are definitely great ways to um, uh, group together certain pieces of that automation. So for example, I'm in my, my demo environment. I created a connect demo solution. What this does is it gives me the ability to, again, group all these customizations, whether they're flows, whether I've made customizations to my lead entity, whether I've got option sets, all of these different things that we can, uh, that we can look at in terms of a customizations around a piece of functionality. So for example, um, then when I'm inside the solution here, I'll go to new and flow. And this is our basic, uh, you know, starting from scratch point for flow. And so as we, as we talked about the ability to automate um, you know, run on demand, schedule. These are the different triggers. The very first thing you're going to do is you're going to select a trigger. And that trigger gives us, again, the ability to, to decide how this, uh, this operation is gonna be performed and when it's gonna be performed. Um, so if, as I was saying before, if we wanna run into, uh, you know, start by creating a lead, but then notifying a specific person that a lead was created. Um, again, a very simplistic operation, but something that could come in handy if you just wanna see how to send an email. So um, if we, oops. So my first trigger for seeing this happen or seeing it happen and making sure that it happens, is I wanna be able to create a lead and I wanna fire something off the creation of that lead. 
A lead is a an entity inside our common data service. So what we're going to do is we're going to click common data service and it gives us the option to say when a flow step is ex executed or when a record is created, updated or deleted. I'm going to select the second one here because then what this does is it gives me the ability to select a combination of different things or specific option options. So I mean, I could do this based on the update of a specific field on a lead too. So if I wanted to at some point um, assign the lead to somebody or automate the assigning of, of the lead to somebody based on certain actions, I could do that. I could update the owner of the lead and, uh, and, and perform an update operation here based on that. But for right now, I'm gonna just select create. And obviously we're gonna drill down directly to the lead entity. It gives you the ability to search and find and narrow down your results. Most of the time, um, unless we're really narrow focused on, on a very specific, uh, you know, user function or business unit function, and we're going to select organization. Um, there are some advanced options here, but, and we might see these a little bit later in, in the advanced section, but uh, again, this alone gives us the ability with saying on create of a lead, I'm going to perform this. I'm going to perform some form of action. Now, uh, as a best practice, what we're what I would always potentially do at this point, or not always potentially, but always do at this point, is start to type, uh, give my flow a title. Um, sometimes the flow engine can be a little picky if you don't name it here uh, right away, because as you start going in and out, you'll see that there might be some in. Um, in um, inconsistencies in the way that the, that the name is maintained. But I'm um, from a naming perspective, I'm gonna try to stay standard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this around a lead and I'm going to notify sales user. So um, the suggested way is, um, you know, from our perspective, just say, what are you firing this off of and what's the action you're doing? Okay, I'm a, I'm a lead, I'm gonna notify a sales user. You could get more granular than that as well, but at this point, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, so I've defined the trigger. The next step is uh, I wanna say, okay, I know what lead is created now. This trigger gives me that context. So whenever that particular record is created, it's gonna fire, it's gonna give me the information that's on that lead so I can take action on. Now, to do that, my action is, I, simply just want to send an email. So I'm going to type in send email. And again, you'll see that there's a bunch of different groups of categories. Um, you can, and, and what we're looking in here now is actions. So the trigger, you can only have one trigger per at, per flow. Uh, but what will happen is each successive block underneath that trigger will be an action. And I just want to send an email. So at this point, uh, this is a pretty interesting little uh, thing. I mean, th this gives me access to any of the users that are on my tenant. So if I wanted to search for Michael Honeycutt, we can pop that in there and then type in um, new or, whoops, lead created, new lead created. And I could customize the subject with some things, um, you know, simple such as um, maybe I want to put the lead name in there or something like that. So if I come down to uh, first name and I put a space in there and I want to put their last name as well. So this the designer here is um, kind of a first edition. So Flow has been kind of evolving as it's been you know, the functionality has been evolving. Um, this is this designer here, the expression editor has um, been kind of static with this. So what you'll see though, is that the, the ability to see what information is available comes from previous blocks in the flow. And so if I start looking at this, it, it groups all of the fields together uh, under a specific block and its name. So that's why naming is extremely important. So if you come in here and you start deciding to uh, you know, create a record, create a record. Maybe you have multiple records that you need to create. You're going to have create a record one and create a record two because you cannot, each name has to be unique. 
And so that's where, um, you know, starting off immediately as you're creating these, always trying to provide some context within the naming scheme to allow for um, easier, ease of use and, and ease of finding some of the information that you're looking for. But again, this expression editor um, on the dynamic content tab gives you all of the uh, available fields that it was able to discern from the previous blocks. So if I had another one up here where I was getting a record, I could see some of the information available from that block, such as maybe if I pulled an account or pulled a system user that was that I wanted to assign something to, um, I could get the email address from it or something like that. So, but again, that aside, this trigger gives me access to all information on that lead. I've got its first name, last name, the new, uh, new lead was created, and I'll type in a, I'm just gonna take that same information and put it in the in the body just for demonstration purpose. Here's here. Okay, and that's it. And now, I mean, obviously at this point, this is pretty simplistic. So we've, we've said we're gonna create a lead, but we also, well, we wanna send an email. But um, obviously at this point, I, I didn't buy, abide by my own uh, best practice. I'm going to send email to sales user. So as it saves and as you've gone through, now, now you've created, a, you've successfully created a flow, now it's time to test it. But before you do that, um, if you come back into your landing page for this particular flow, you can start to see how some of this uh, how some of this works. Um, like if you created a flow in in my flows, and you wanted to send a copy of it to somebody, or you wanted to export it for um, for you know all, all purposes, but then if you wanted to from this particular location edit its name or edit certain pieces of that. Um, down here, you can see the 28-day uh, running history. So it'll see, it'll tell you where it's failed, where it succeeded. Um, obviously, these are the connections that we're using. I pulled an event from the common data service for the current environment that it's that it's deployed to. Uh, and I'm also using an Office 365 Outlook connector. And the owner of it is me as the administrator. I have the option to turn it off, turn it on, on demand and you know, I'll show you a little bit about that later on but basically what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go into uh, to CRM this is the environment that this flow is tied to I'm going to create a lead and it's going to be very basic but um, So these are all just different pieces of data that, um, you know, there's only certain pieces that are required, but. So I just created my lead and now I wanna make sure that this is running. And so if I come back to this lead or to this flow, I refresh my run history. I can see that this has been, that this is running. So I try to do that. I click on the actual session itself, and then I can see the steps and how they ran. So as this was created, I can see the inf information as it comes in. I can see how it was used, all the information that came in from it. And, and essentially, here's my uh, the subject and all the information that came from it. Now, I'm again, I'm logged in as Michael Honeycutt over here on this tenant. And if we look at mail, here's my email. Very simple, very just, you know, beginner level type things. But this is this is one of the entry points that you can that you can start looking at for, you know, how to start working in Power Automate. Now, if I were to go back to um, looking at a more intermediate uh, way to interact with some of these things, 
uh, more times than not, we've we have again custom lead generation processes, and you know one that we've come across a number of times in the uh, in the recent past is using a form or a contact form to uh, push something directly into CRM as a lead. And so what I'm going to do is 